Good morning. Never have one of those days where you you break the routine and then like you do everything out of order. Okay. Got in my car and buckled up and realized I didn't have my keys in my hand so I had to like get my keys out of my pocket it's everything went out of order somehow I was up working on this uh, idea I had for and I'm calling it auto mouse or something like that something where it's just a controller that uh, functions as a mouse with a joystick, uh, but it also <clears throat> allows you to live program it. So this is something I kind of realized I wanted because I, with my keyboard I can record keystrokes pretty easily, but there are limits to the live record and there are limits to the macros. So setting the keyboard to uh, store mouse movements is more annoying and takes a lot of uh, uh, trial and error. A similarly, uh, auto hotkey can do all this too, obviously. Uh, but that also takes a lot of trial and error. So I was trying to think of a, a separate system. At first it was just one, but it'll probably be multiple. Uh, with just different memory registers where you, uh, you know, you've got either a joystick or a set of buttons for mouse movements. But you move the mouse around and it's a normal mouse. But then you hit record on one of the macro buttons. And then you record the movements of the mouse. <clears throat> and like click events and stuff like that. And then you uh, end the recording. And then you can play those back. <clears throat> and then instead of playing it back at uh, regular speed, you play it back at full speed, which is also easier on the memory. So like, if you move the mouse to the right, or you, you know, you peg the joystick all the way to the right, and then in one second it's moved, you know, 200 pixels, let's say, that's technically just one movement that we care about. So you just keep a... Uh, a memory value for X and Y movement and you just keep uh, combining it with the previous so that your mouse movement when you play it back is not one 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 you know 200 times it's just 200 and that way you can play back instant mouse movements and precise mouse movements and I think it's gonna I think it's probably gonna need a well, depending on the situation uh, I have it designed to have a reset button so that when the macro starts, it starts in the top left. You know, you max it out by sending, uh, you know, a thousand X and a thousand Y, or negative a thousand X and negative a thousand Y, and that just brings it up to that reset point in the top left corner of your screen. And then from there, you move it all around. Uh, that way, the mouse movements are, you know, the, is basically three datagrams that get sent. The first one resets the mouse to the top left of the screen. It moves it that far. The second one moves it to the standard position, you know, 200 to the right, 100 down or something like that. And then the third instruction clicks the mouse. And then you can just replay that as many times you want as you want. And then you can set it up to, uh, so that's like, that's one macro. And then, like, obviously, it has to be a numpad, so you gotta have nine macros. <laughs> and then, uh, you need a reset button, and then a matrix. It's actually probably, just for simplicity's sake, going to be six, uh, six matrix buttons. The cool thing about this is it also allows me to, uh, replay mouse movements for cell phones because uh, yeah, the Android phones have cell phones they're cell phones the Android phones are <laughs> okay 
uh, they accept USB mouse and keyboard input and stuff like that. And all the touch functions, like I can automate, so again, I can automate stuff on my phone, on my keyboard, um, but all the touch functions and stuff, they're just no fun because you have to touch your phone. And your phone has absolutely no tactility except for like the edges and that you can feel where about about where you are on the edges they don't even have anchor points on the side you can add your own but well whatever the point is to be able to interface with your phone without looking much like a keyboard and without uh, distracting yourself so like when I was driving uh, when I was driving for Lyft there was always little hand gestures you had to do with your phone it was very common common motions that I had to do uh, you know switching between the map and the app uh, accepting calls as soon as possible stuff like that um, and all of that stuff for all those things I had to take my eyes off the road look at my phone engage my phone you know move my thumb around it uh, and you can get kind of good at it, but having an automated mouse system would have been way better. So then you're not charging, but then it's easy enough to write something that is just for like the Adafruit Bluetooth feather thing. Because then you can automate tasks on your phone. Uh, plus I've already got the, U the input switching down. So it's pretty easy. So if, it, it, if it's connected to your cell phone, then, you know, you can Bluetooth it and it'll go to your cell phone and do whatever you're doing. But if you plug it into a computer, it'll detect that it's plugged and then route the inputs straight to the computer instead. So the, they won't be persistent because it's just an ASIC and the EEPROM is not... I mean, it's there. It's not great for storage. Uh, maybe that's a, a planned obsolescence there. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> this is just a Pro Micro we're talking about, too, so it's like, eh. Um, plus, it, for industrial applications, I mean, like, doing your cell phone, it's like, you might want to re-record those. Well, you probably don't want to re-record. You, you probably want to hard-code those. Hmm. Uh, either way, for the, uh, I forgot what was I saying, the cell phone? Uh, oh, for industrial applications, you usually, I mean, <laughs> it's like going to a factory floor and they'll plug it in and then they'll leave it for uh, eight years and then they'll call and say that it's not working and you show up and it's because the inside is, is, uh, has become like, uh, a cloud of dust bunnies and metal shavings or something like that and something shorted <laughs> like oh it stopped working I don't know he like hit it with a hammer or something and then it stopped working somehow I don't know it's always just like they just let it run they don't care that's cool I like that about uh, people that actually yeah, I guess don't work with computers they don't care about them they just want them to run forever which is what I want, actually. So something as simple as a, a little mouse recorder thing, it might not even need to be able to re-recording. And if they don't like it lacking the re-recording, lacking saving, uh, if they don't like, if they don't like it being impermanent, I don't even know what I'm saying here. If they dislike having to re-record after they lose power, then yeah, then then you can uh, pay the added fee to get everything hard coded, I guess. Because once it's hard coded, I mean, it doesn't matter. That's a easy consulting fee, right? <laughs> um, but just think about that. There's all this garbage, especially with mice. <laughs> mice on factory floors stuff getting all worn out and gross you just have something that's all nice and encapsulated and simple buttons push this button to 
click on file, drag down to, uh, uh, you know, apply to system, scroll or move to the right, and then to get the second contextual menu, and then go down to whichever menu item you want. They can automate anything. I mean, that, that was my limitation. That was what, super, what was super annoying to me, is when you make... Well, really, when you make me work on a system that doesn't have keyboard shortcuts, pretty much that's it. Um, so the ability to be able to take these mouse movements and uh, record them or pre-record them and replay them <sighs> not just easily and re not to be able to record them or and record them and play them back and re-record them very easily um, I think that's uh, really nice it's not something that people think about it's, it's again it's one of those it's one of those things that like well this takes uh, this only takes eight seconds every time we do it okay cool how many times do you do it oh like a like a thousand times a day <laughs> well, not a thousand but you know um uh, <clears throat> just more opportunity to save time and to make all this process easier. Eventually, it would be cool to have something that just records your input device of choice and then plays it back. That would be ideal, <clears throat> but uh, not really super necessary. That would be like pure software. That would probably be better, actually. You could just like USB monitor and replay stuff. Hmm. I don't know.